everybody. Welcome to lesson 13 with the CG Nuggets workshop, the epic film creature battle beast. Uh, okay, so we've been talking about getting UVs prepared, a little bit of boring stuff in there, but necessary goodness of knowing your UV coordinates for preparing for texturing and um, things like uh, that, getting displacement maps, bump maps, and uh, normal mapping if you're into that sort of thing. But since we're doing a film creature, I thought I'd kind of go the displacement route. And uh, before we get into that side of things, uh, displacement and painting and all that good stuff, we need to talk about the final stage of your sculpting. Um, as you can see on my screen here now, uh, this guy isn't quite done yet. Uh, certain pieces are pretty much taken pretty far, like the uh, saddle and the straps are pretty much done, except for that seat. The body needs, you know, the fine detailing, the micro detailing, and the hair hasn't been really touched in quite a while. So I'll probably do that later because uh, it gets to be pretty tedious just drawing in hair strokes. So um, the first thing we'll do uh, here in this lesson number 13 is get into uh, how to finish off something like uh, the body, the head. Uh, what are the things I do as my last parts of uh, sculpting? And at this point, he's pretty much done for the... For the um, tertiary, you know, we're past secondary or past tertiary at this point uh, as we get ready to do micro detailing, uh, things like surfacing of the skin so we can get an idea of what he might feel like if we kind of rubbed our hand along uh, his skin or things like that. I mean, he looks pretty smooth right now, which is okay if we want to do something like that, but uh, it just tends to look a little unfinished. You know, it's like we have several spots in here that could use some some polish, and you have it'll point out a few things that are just eyesores to me. This whole area here is kind of a weird spot with the uh, the way the uh, let's see. There we go. This whole the strokes. You see these little strokes in there? That's that's not um, that's not finished off. We want that to look good. I mean, we added some of the strokes for some, you know, some texturing kind of, you know, some you know, some tactile kind of feel to it, but it tends to look a little um, overworked or uh, perhaps actually a better word for it is more like unfinished. Uh, we don't want it to be too, um, you know, too sculpt sculpted looking. You know, we want it to look like a creature. Uh, another area is this kind of stuff here, where it's just a, a lonesome wrinkle that we added, which is it's fine. It just needs some support, and uh, we'll, that'll get us into uh, some of these details here soon in a minute that I'll be talking about. Like, how do you do that? How do you finish off an area like that where you just have a, a simple wrinkle just kind of sitting out there? So we'll work on that, but a lot of this stuff is just, there's too much smoothness, uh, there's too much of that kind of stuff going on. Um, so let's get into that now. Let's go ahead and talk about the the brushes I use, I use the uh, alphas, the types of strokes, uh, that kind of thing. Walk you through that. Okay, so the first thing to keep in mind uh, when doing these final touches uh, is to, uh, I'm going to isolate out the object that I'm working on first of all. Um, the first thing I want you to just think about is the, what are, what are you doing here basically? You're getting in here and you're uh, adding a general, there's two different things, there's a general surface quality that you're that you're adding, uh, whether it's like skin pores, um, a certain type of dryness to the skin that needs to be applied 
kind of in a uniform kind of look. Um, that's the first thing I think about. So there's a way to apply that. And then there's also uh, dealing with um, the finer detailing of uh, custom wrinkles, fine wrinkles, uh, damage, you know, just uh, tattering and, and, and tearing on certain things, maybe not on the body, but like on the armor and that kind of things. We did those, those finer details there. Uh, so that's more of an isolated kind of bit, you know, depending on what the surface is, uh, kind of approach. Um, like for instance, the, the eye wrinkles here are going to be a different kind of thing. We can't just, just do a global kind of application and expect the wrinkles to look good uh, in the eyes compared to the mouth and compared to the neck. These are all just custom areas. And a lot of these areas, like under here in his mouth, where we do the Damien standard kind of stuff, we just kind of cut in. Um, that's just stuff to kind of get it, get us going for the for this particular stage. Um, it looks okay by itself if you zoom back. It looks all right, but if you zoom in, it really stands out. You know, you can really see individual strokes, things like that. And that's um, that's when you know you need to take it to the next level. And this is stuff you can't just do with a single brush. Like you can't just do it with the Damien standard and then you go in there with every single stroke for the wrinkles. You just can't do that. Uh, it'll take too long and it'll look um, probably messy and kind of, uh, I don't know, look too handmade or something. Uh, so let's talk about the first thing. The first thing I'll do is a general overall kind of skin quality because the reason I do that is because it, it you know when I go add the extra wrinkles on later um, I'm adding it on top of that surfacing that's there it just looks better that way rather than the other way around so um, let's go ahead and do the general stuff so for that I'll just go to standard brush and I think what we'll do is we'll do a uh, spray and we'll go find an alpha that works for us. Now I've loaded up some alphas uh, for later on for wrinkling and, and things like that. Uh, some of these I was just testing out a while ago because um, some looks, some things look different. You know, these are all default alphas, right? So if I went in here and I just kind of picked a few of these just to give you an example of what maybe a different look might look like. Uh, let's try. There's one in particular, this one right here, this little vein, it, you know, these veins, uh, Alpha 22 with a spray. And I'll back off the Z intensity, which I think is 25 at default for the standard. If I go in here and I just start, this is all one single stroke here, right? I'm just swimming around the surface of the creature. You'll see it looks like a really like a dry skin kind of look. It doesn't look like veins. And I've got it on Z sub, by the way, I forgot to mention that. Um, so if you want a dry skin, this is an excellent way to get started with that. And I just basically go around, you see the lazy mouse kind of thing sticking behind. Just You do want to actually have that on, because if you didn't, it would do something a little bit different. So if I hit the L key for lazy mouse, let's go find a spot that's empty. It's going to do way too fast and it's going to look just like a bunch of noise. So keep that uh, lazy mouse on. I just have it set to one since it did, undid all that stuff. Um, another thing to do is keep this stuff on a layer. Before we start, I need to put this all on a layer. Uh, and the reason being is uh, I can adjust the in intensity later on. We've mentioned this before a few times in this particular workshop and previous tutorials that I've done, I've always been using layers. And um, the first thing I always do, though, is store the morph target. Like I said before, the reason we do that is so we can erase everything back to this position that it is now. Uh, so if we mess up, mess up a surface and it looks kind of weird later on that maybe we missed something that we didn't know that we were doing, like on the flip side of the nose, like uh, you know, I was scrubbing over here with some alphas and it was hitting the other side weird. Um, I could erase that out later on with the morph brush like we talked about before. So um, 
Yeah, so I got my more target stored. Let's go ahead and do a layer. Let's just call this skin one. And uh, keep in mind that adding layers will make your file sizes bigger, but uh, that is not a big deal. Um, okay, so we're not using that one, <laughs> that alpha. Let's try 23. And this one has more of like a pockmark kind of look, kind of like he's got um, acne scars. Let's see if I, and if I did a Z add, you know, obviously it'd be the opposite, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a little bit kind of on the, I don't know, more like a reptile kind of feel. Maybe it doesn't feel that way to you, but that's what it kind of looks like to me. Um, so we'll keep trying these. Trial by error is kind of how I roll. Um, this is another one. This is a little bit too soft, a little too blurry. You know, even if we sharpen that up a bit, it still look kind of, you know, it would look all right, I guess. But this one in particular I wanted to kind of show you. This one right here. Uh, which one was that? Alpha 21. This one has more of like a, uh, cr like a crusty kind of feel to it. Let me uh, in up the intensity. So it feels kind of like paint chips. So if you got a character that's got this kind of stuff on them, that might be kind of cool to add that as like a maybe like a rust kind of effect or whatever. So that's the cool thing about these alphas that you can experiment with. And these are all the default alphas with ZBrush too. So um, you know a lot more can be done with outside alphas if you'd like to bring those in. Um, but the one that I'd like to use, let's see, it was over here. Actually, there's two different things. Alpha 25 is the one I probably will end up using. Uh, but I'm going to put it on Z add. I'll probably back it off. But the, the effect is this. I'm going to just back it off a little bit, though. So we're going to go down to like 8. And I'm going to roll that pretty much everywhere. Another thing I want to mention about doing this kind of stuff is um, you want to have a good material to use so you can read what you're doing. And you also want to have, make sure you are using the standard brush because some of these other brushes like Inflate and Clay, they have a little bit different effect with these alphas. Uh, I just tend to go with the standard because it just does a st straight up, you know, right off the normals type of extrude as opposed to inflate, which will puff out as it goes. And clay has like a soft spot in the middle as you stroke it, and it's kind of weird looking. Uh, go off symmetry for a second, asymmetric, just so I can hit the nose down the center line here. Just uh, rolls better that way. I've created a, a custom material here by just copying another material. And uh, you know, I just call it mat, it's just a matte cap gray, which is, it was originally this, and I messed with the uh, sliders and the modifiers. I messed with all this stuff, I messed with the cavity detection, intensity, all that stuff. And I got this, which is a little bit different kind of read on the cavities and stuff. Um, kind of helps me see the surfacing better kind of pops just a little bit better for me. Um, and you've also seen me use this one previously as the basic material, but it's a little bit wet and shiny. It's kind of hard to tell what I'm doing. So um, that's the reason I use that one. And uh, there you go. You can also switch this to, I do believe it was one of these kinds of weird looking ones. No, I just did that one. Four. Sometimes I go to this one because it really tells me where I've where I've hit the uh, the areas with this particular alpha. So you just kind of have to tell you know cycle through these to see which one works the best. I kind of forget sometimes because there's so many of them. So let's we'll see. There's my phone. Um, there we go. Let's turn that off. Cause that's distracting, isn't it? So th I'll have this little material and I'll basically use this to kind of check. But this works just fine for the most part. So we'll just hit all the 
major areas and turn symmetry back on. And so it just starts to add a little bit more of a roughness to it, a little bit more of a skin quality, which is what I want. A little bit just more organic, I should say. I mean, obviously it's skin, but I want it to feel more natural. And this is just kind of like the foundation for everything uh, for this particular phase. Let me scrub behind the ears. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to go and pretty much scrub this over the entire body. Doesn't take that long. Um, and you'll also notice that I'm not using a, a drag rectangle system where you just drag, drag, drag the uh, the alpha. It just takes way too long, especially with an alpha this size. If I just kept doing this over the whole thing, it'd take forever. So I'm going to go in here and spray it. You can also use the uh, surface, do the noise plug-in thing they got now, but I, I haven't used it that much, so I kind of just go with what works for me and my workflow. But I've seen people use that for, for their stuff, and it, it seems pretty cool. And also, just some areas will be smoother than others. You know, like we're going to have rougher texture in certain spots, right? Um, and we can do that just by going over it again, you know, that kind of thing. I actually kind of like that. Or if it's too much one area, you can just smooth it out or erase it out with the morph brush. I'm going to be careful about not going over the same areas too much, you know, like more than a couple times. Uh, it just tends to over overdo the effect when I do that. Just uh, this turns noisy. I didn't do a whole lot of that. Uh, I didn't do any of that kind of work where I clean up, you know, weird strokes like over here on his ear. I didn't go and do that, um, but you know, I could probably just do that real quick and then put this effect on it. There we go. But just be mindful of that kind of thing because those things stick out pretty bad if you don't pay attention to them. Um, <clears throat> and usually I'll keep the brush size the same throughout, or I'll try to, and relative to the screen and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but some areas, it can actually look better and more convincing if you just enlarge the brush a little bit, like back here in his belly and stuff. I think it looks better if, if I'm not doing like real tiny stuff like that. So just use your, you know, your judgment on that, uh, what, what looks better. I'm using a pretty soft pressure too. I'm not pushing very hard. Uh, just kind of helps me. It's easier on my wrist that way, first of all. And uh, it also just um, gives a nice subtle effect. If I push really hard, it just looks kind of, I don't know, mealy. You know, it looks too noisy. And, you know, we can adjust the. the uh, Z intensity, if you want to make it, if you want to be able to push pretty hard and still get a soft effect like this, you just got to knock it down to like three or something on the Z intensity. But I just tend to I like to keep it easy on my wrists. I'm getting old, been doing this for a while, and you know, you got to preserve yourself as much as you can. Keep it for them young folk out there who, uh, who are invincible. Just find out whatever is comfortable for you, basically. You just figure out what that is and just roll with it. If your workflow is a little bit different than other people, it's not a big deal. I found that, you know, um, after, you know, working for myself for a long time, with my own company, but then also getting contracted out to work with other people, other companies, I should say, that, you know, I find that, you know, everybody's workflow is just a tad bit different. We all understand the 
process, the overall process, but there's certain things and order of things that people do. It's just different, but it all looks the same in the end, or generally speaking, it does. Um, it's just how you get there and what's most comfortable for you. You know, but you know, different companies have different pipelines. You just got to be mindful of that too. But um, some, I mean, some people really are interested in your particular way of doing things too. So don't don't sell yourself short. If you've got successful a successful portfolio and that people are interested in, they're gonna want to know how you did it and maybe even adapt their uh, workflow to kind of emulate yours. And that's that's kind of how I got my workflows because I saw other people doing certain things a certain way. Uh, you just pick it up over time. You know, practice during projects. You know, you, some things you have to learn on the job, like in the middle of the freak out moments, or sometimes you're just working on a personal project at home and you're pushing yourself to uh, improve your your art. Is when it, that's you know you find yourself doing. Uh, learning things so um, I've done I've learned in both capacities and it works it works great that way for me all right seems like it's getting pretty good coverage some of the stuff in the tail looks kind of simple like back here it's kind of weird but I can adjust that a bit later all right <coughs> so now that we've finished that let's turn off uh, record and let's go and multiply this times two. Let's make it a, a value of two. And you can see it just pop just a little bit more. And then you can even just keep going with it. I like to just type in whole numbers at first, and then I can, if it's too much, I'll go in between. And I try not to slide it around too much, especially this high level at six million polys. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of polys, but whenever you're messing with layers and uh, sliders and, and things like that. It's kind of I I try not to do that because it gets to be a little skippy, a little crashy. Um, oops, turn the recording back on. Wait for it. Also, you'll probably notice that I've got a new button up here. It's the memory button. If you go to preferences, mem, there's a compact now. Um, but then I have a lot of crashing issues lately. With, 4R4P2. Um, you can see that you got a scratch disk up here and you got free memory in your active memory. So, all these different things about your memory. This is the number I watch up here at the top. And when that gets low, it tends to crash out. And usually it'll save out a recovery file um, on your hard drive somewhere. But notice how I hit the compact now and that number is at plus 3000 now. Uh, and, and until ZBrush is a 64-bit application, hopefully soon. Um, I guess in five, hopefully it will be. And if you're watching this now and it's already out, then there you go, use that. Uh, but for now, it only uses up to four gigs, but hopefully in the future we'll be able to use, I got 32 gigs in my machine and I like to use those <laughs> one day with ZBrush. So um, there you go, there's memory talk. Okay, so I was gonna paint that little area, that's right. There's some areas that looks a little light on the texturing. Okay, get get the idea now. So let's hit the little icon for that just to turn it off. And I think that looks pretty good. We may go up to say two. It may look okay there. Maybe even just like a 1.5. So I mean, it's just it's it doesn't really matter at this point. The point is that we've got the source laid out. We've got what we needed added to the to the uh, creature. So what we need to do now, after every layer, I will always, always save because I just put a lot of work. <laughs> Not a whole lot of work, but you know, you don't want to have to repeat this all over again if, if something goes bad. In other words, this is just the kind of workflow you have to deal with whenever you're messing with high poly objects like this. So I'm going to go ahead and save it out and we'll move on to the next layer. Let's go hit the big layer button. Let's go and uh, 
rename this to let's do the wrinkle wrinkle stuff wrinklies all right I'm gonna just uh, let's go ahead and hide the body for a second and I'm gonna just uh, isolate out the head is what I'm trying to do just so it make it a little bit faster because I, I don't need all this stuff on awesome that's not exactly what I had in mind let's try it again it's another p painful part of dealing with just these higher polys is uh, some things just take a little bit longer than usual no matter how fast your system is just dealing with a t ton of polys here all right now we can get to work so the layering still records even though we've only got part of the mesh hidden just so you know and you can go down to lower levels and work and it'll record on that layer as well all right so if you've seen other tutorials that I've done uh, over at CG Nuggets you've seen me create this new brush called form soft wrinkles all it is is a form soft brush which you can just find here in the normal menu and you it doesn't have any alpha on the default form soft such as the Z intensity of three with a Z add that's all it is but the cool thing about form soft like we've talked about before is that it will keep the detailing intact that you've got underneath it so I could actually literally go here and and puff up certain areas now if you go too far with it it smooths it out but I can actually you know get in here and really keep ex accentuating certain parts of the skin and it keeps the uh, the detailing there if I tried something like that with see like the clay brush clay brush automatically smooths as it goes so just uh, watch out for that and then inflate of course you can use that but it, it it tends to push the details together and makes little weird artifacts at the real micro level all that to be said form soft brush I made a copy of it so I basically just took this form soft brush and added um, an alpha to it and that alpha is up here it's the alpha 58 um, and it's got a blur of 8 and a radial fade of 8 and that's just a kind of a general number you can make it 4 for the blur you can make it 10 for the blur I mean you can make it whatever you want whatever looks good to you but I, I tend to, to blur this particular alpha because it's a bit sharp and then I put a radial fade on it because it's got too much of an abrupt um, kind of into it if you can kind of see there it's just uh, not what I'm looking for it's easy to turn with it having a radial fade on to like turning corners around mouths and stuff and then I bump down the Z intensity to 2 go to Z sub and uh, yeah we're good to go and all this is doing is uh, adding in minor wrinkling So I can go in here and really start to get fine-tuned with the wrinkles. Undo a few of these. Because I want to go down to a Z intensity of 1. Sometimes I go between 1 and 2 on this particular one. Um, you may be able to mess with the embed value. I haven't really messed with that. And you can also turn on Lazy Mouse. Well, actually, no, don't use Lazy Mouse because uh, it'll be like a pattern. Here, I'll show you. It'll have like a weird kind of thing to it. It doesn't work that great with it on, so never mind all that. There we go, it's better. It's a little bit more sensitive to the pressure. All right, so basically I'm going around to these bigger uh, wrinkles here and just give them a little radiating support. I don't want him to look like a an old creature, but I, I do want it to feel like he's got some sort of skin uh, texturing to him. And it's a little pixelated here, but I think that's going to be all right. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. Some that will get resolved in the color map 
and uh, perhaps a, a bump map. And a lot of what we're doing now is actually painting the bump map. Because if I went down another level past this, we wouldn't be able to see most of this work. And that's all the differences between this and the previous subdivision level is the stuff we're doing now. Some of this, most of this stuff won't carry through as, um, like displacement will hold it, but whenever you calculate a bump map, bump map out, it'll most likely just be these particular strokes we're doing. Um, you know, besides kind of like the last parts of some of the deeper areas. It's kind of hard to explain <laughs> with words. We'll get to that kind of stuff uh, soon. Displacement, bump, all that good stuff. So you see here, I'm just I'm adding like in between kind of wrinkles, leaving alone the, the big stuff we've added earlier. I mean, there's a reason we added that in the first place. We don't want to overwork it. Leave it leaving looking pretty good. Um, and I'm just stroking in the direction of that wrinkle and also just the movement of the skin. So if his eyebrows will scrunch together, uh, they're going to make a, a, a certain pattern on the skin. And zoom out, kind of see where we're going with this. And we'll do a before and after. Usually kind of fun to see what this kind of work uh, will do for pushing it to the next level. And every now and then I'll push a little harder and I'll get a couple little digs in there. Don't forget to adjust your brush size every now and then to reflect the scale of the wrinkles that you're painting. A little bit tedious of a process, but it's actually kind of fun. I actually like this part of the process. It's relaxing to me. I've, got, I've done most of the work, so I'm just kind of following guides uh, with the other, with this with this particular brush. I'm just following the Damien standard strokes, the secondary and tertiary forms that we've painted and sculpted already, I should say. Um, so it's really, I think it's a pretty fun part of the process. And you start really seeing things come alive in this in this thing. And it's real subtle. Um, you can kind of switch in between matte caps so you can kind of see the difference. Oops, I need to turn on. Uh, symmetry again. That was almost a bad mistake. That's one thing you don't want to forget in this particular stage is symmetry being on when it needs to be on because transferring details to their side with the smart resim can be a little time consuming with these high polys. And frankly, sometimes it just crashes and it won't work. So, <laughs> uh, not to say, you know, that ZBrush isn't doing a good job, it's just uh, makes it a little difficult whenever you just want to project something on the other side and it takes 20 minutes to do it. And be careful with smoothing because when you smooth, you're smoothing out the other layer, that texturing layer we did at the very beginning. Uh, you're smoothing all that detail out and I like it on while I sculpt these wrinkles because it sculpts that um, the wrinkles into the first layer there. It looks more believable that way. So if I had just turned it off while I was doing all these wrinkles, then I turn that other layer on. It's just going to add it on top and it's going to look kind of, um, I don't know the word, it's just, it looks weird. So I just build it up in the layers and then I'll mess with the intensities. Now let's get in here pretty tight with this little area, with this little baggy part of his mouth. I'm going to try to get some wrinkles to come, come pouring out of the corner. I really want to look like a pretty loose piece of skin here. 
And if you looked at like dogs or certain big cats on the corners of their mouths, they got these, you know, the real baggy kind of look to their skin there on the edges. And it may require a different kind of brush. Uh, like for instance, I may just go in here, use a form soft. And I'll go puff in between certain wrinkles to kind of get a little bit more of that loose kind of feel. Real subtle stuff. I mean, nothing like, wow. But just that's the kind of stuff I, I do. So there you go. So you can kind of like just kind of turn it. You can kind of see that it's starting to make it look more like a a real surface on a real creature kind of thing. That's that's what we want. A little pixelation there. Um, when that happens, I tend to just avoid it putting out too much wrinkles there and I'll just try to add that later uh, in Photoshop and use the, um, the texture mapping to, to get a sharper result in that particular area, whether it's with the color map or it's with the, um, the bump map. So if it, the ZBrush can't hold it up that great, I try not to paint it there but, or sculpt it there because it, it just um, and it gives you a messy map later on. It just doesn't look clean. All right, same thing here with the big wrinkles. So I'm going to just um, actually need to take this down at one again. I'm going to radiate outward. Is that where that tooth is kicking up, right? It's pushing up on that part of the skin. So I need to reflect that, that kind of effect a lot more here in this, this part of the lip rather than in the upper part. Trying to get a little bit of a texturing kind of feel to the nose. A little bit of a different kind of look here. We're all kind of cracked edges and stuff on the edges. Oops, sorry. Again, trying to avoid symmetrical things right there in the front of the face. It just looks real obvious if I do that. So I'll go in here and add even more little extra bits of wrinkling and, and skin marks to kind of make them look just uh, as asymmetric as I can without you know, going crazy with it. So I'll just kind of keep pushing on here. And uh, do keep in mind, this is kind of a, it's a bit of a tedious task. I mentioned that earlier, but just as far as how long it's going to take to go in here and do all this stuff, um, you know, it's, this is the part that probably will take a little bit longer because it's just, just such a custom 
aspect of it. Like it took us like no time at all to go and spray the entire body with that surface texture. But you know, it's just going to take us a little bit of uh, effort to go in here and put these little these finer uh, wrinkles in. But I think this is where it really starts to come alive, and I think it'll really pay off. And you get the best results also when you don't try using gimmicks or um, you know relying on all the, the special shortcuts or um, supposed like you know great features of software package are supposed to make your you know those things that make your job easier or whatever there's certain things that are really great yes like last video we talked about the UV master and really get to see why it is awesome and but it's not going to do your job either it's not going to create your work for you and this stuff just takes a little bit of time so you just have to put in the hours put in the time a little bit of the heartache of uh, the technical side of things but it's really really worth it once you once you finish something and you can just you know, be proud of it, what you've created. Okay. <clears throat> Let's kind of move on to some other parts. Let's go over here. This is all kind of messy area. You can kind of see how this will all kind of tie together pretty good. I want to just hit it with a few strokes. So like I said before, just kind of hitting the these main wrinkles, just giving it some support. You know, there's a little bit of order, order to the madness, a little bit to the flow, just kind of following the chunks of the muscle mass and getting wrinkles to be kind of, you know, living around those forms and being bunched together. Um, around it to really f finish off that what we're seeing is the, is the form is the skin is being manipulated as well and so we need to indicate that with these strokes that we're putting in now um, that, that just really ties everything to the final kind of look and that to me is why I mean detailing is fun but we've put in all this work I mean we've put in I don't know, how many videos worth of uh, sculpting and modeling base foundation and anatomy, um, thinking about you know secondary forms and tertiary forms, and uh, not getting too far ahead of ourselves with any kind of real detailing. And uh, but now we're getting to reap that reward of all of that because we've done all the hard work. Now we're just, I mean, we're just flying through, adding these details. And this is when it really starts to punch. You know, you can just, I mean, you can literally just see it develop right in front of your eyes as all these kind of almost weird looking uh, formations that we had here down in the mouth are really starting to make more sense now. And uh, it's really, it's really an exciting thing. Let me tell you another thing that may help. Uh, speed up the process as well. Let's go and find our drag rect and I'm going to get an alpha that I've uh, here let me move this guy back here. The alpha, these wrinkle alphas yeah these two are the main ones I use um, I think I got them off of the Pixelogic alpha library um, this one's a real good, like, fine wrinkle. And this one's a good, a little bit, just more of a harsher kind of, I mean, similar to the this alpha that we've been using, but just a little, a little more busy. So let's use this one first. And uh, let's see, I got, let's go to Z sub. Oops. So I don't have to sit there and hold the alt key. And we have Z intensity of 8. Let's take off the... Uh, which we call it lazy radius. Let's amp this up to about 16. There you go. You can kind of see that what these wrinkles do. So now you can kind of fill in 
some of the spots in between all these smoother areas. Let's go down to 12. These smoother areas you can kind of tie together with this kind of thing. Um, so I will definitely do that along the way. And I'll flip it and, you know, get the change up. But this will get it kind of like a nice kind of feel to it. You be wary of little marks in your alphas that are repeating. So I drag it on, you can see that little dash there in the middle. Just be careful how you hide that thing. Um, you don't want it to show up over and over again in your in your on your creature. So you just gotta be careful where you put it. Like sometimes I just kind of tie it into another wrinkle to the end of it. Or you can just go in there real quick and smooth it out. Man, it takes a little bit of time to do that kind of junk, but most of the time you can't really notice that. Okay, so let's use the other one real quick just to show what it does. And it's just a little bit harsher and the and the hard thing about using the drag rect is that or any of these kind of alphas that you just kind of stamp on is that I mean it's it's stuck it, it, it can't I can't curve around like that like I can do with that wrinkles brush I made I have to stick with the way this alpha comes on so you just got to find it and you got to put it on in a way that it, that it works and makes sense so you have to just kind of use it sparingly in a way that just makes sense. Like it may make sense right here in the front. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Actually, this one um, I tend to use on the larger areas like, like that on the neck. I knew there was a reason I got that one out. Sometimes I forget what I was going with certain things. And let's back it off a little bit. So it gives a nice just finish to certain spots like that. It's usually a little bit of time with doing a lot of that custom wrinkling. But you can't do these curved areas. So you got to go in here and just manually do it. So this is my general approach for just kind of like, you know, this kind of um, generic hairless kind of skin that's not reptilian and it's not human, but it doesn't have fur. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, just a, a tactile feeling of, <clears throat> of skin. So I could do this all night, but I will move on here in a second uh, and we'll get into the last couple of layers that we'll need to add to this to complete and that's the cool thing about layers as well is that I can go in and, and kind of work on these different areas at different times so meaning uh, if I, I get kind of bored of doing wrinkles or I get inspired to do something else like uh, you know damage or pores or any of that kind of stuff, I can I can stop any time and do that. Alright, let's take a let's take a look. Let's turn on the other sub tools. Usually kinda of helps. I think he's looking cool. He's starting to really come alive. Um, I need to push in just a little bit more. You kind of zoom out, you can see how deep you're going with things. So some spots really need some deeper kind of treatment, like over here in this lip, over here in this eye, eyelid, not eyelid, sorry, just um, eye wrinkles, these kind of wrinkle areas. So I'll, that's another thing I'll do before going on to the next layer too, is just 
push a little more in certain spots. Make sure it's got that depth that we want to, to have. So just go in there and push a little bit. Just kind of smash it in there. Accentuate what you already got. That kind of thing. But yeah, just have fun with it and the rest will take care of itself. Real just fine settling or subtle type wrinkling here. Really enjoy that look that it does. No, wrong way. Let's see what we got. See, it just is too straight. All right. <clears throat> so enough noodling around with that. Let's uh, go ahead and go to solo mode again. And I'm going to unhide the rest of the body so I can create a new layer. And this layer will be... Let's do some um, pores. Pore kind of, you know. It's not really like people skin pores, but just like a, a fine, fine, fine pore thing. Let's wait for this to unhide. It's taking an unreasonably long time. <laughs> um, I hope you kind of gotten some inspiration here, though, with this, with the fine detailing. I think it's. I, mean, I think we're getting to the point here where it's really starting to come alive. It's pretty exciting to work on this kind of stuff. Um, and that's why you want to stay organized with these um, layers. Because if you don't like something, you can just turn off the layer or minimize it. Um, you know, if we wanted to punch up the wrinkles, for sure. I mean, I'd like it in the future if we had the ability to uh, accentuate certain parts of the layers, like we masked off a, um, a certain part of the layer and then cranked up the intensity on that particular part, that kind of stuff. But for now, you just work around that and, and uh, not expect everything to be easy as far as like, you know, straightforwardness of that kind of thinking. But I mean, we've got layers here, so we should be pretty happy just to have layers in general. So let's go and find a poor alpha. Let's see, maybe in skins. So I have this, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, try poor small, and that one works pretty good too, this alien skin. Another thing I think I got off of Pixelogic's uh, alpha library. I already got that one open, so I'll show you that one too. All right, so let's see, the pores small. Now let's start into a spot where we probably would see pores right here. All right, this pores small is literally just like dots, uh, which can be cool, but I don't know if that's the look I want to do. Um, I'll try to blur it, let's see what it does. Oh, I can't see anything, so it doesn't do any too much blur. Let's go to four. Maybe two. It, it could probably work, but I kind of I'm going to try another one. Just see, I think that works a little bit better. Let me compact the memory real quick. Get that sneaky suspicion that it's gonna crash and that I don't want it to. Um, but yeah, the pores, I kind of wanted to, I don't know if the whiskers look is what I'm thinking of. I'm, I'm thinking of like, you know, the texture kind of effect here. Let's get a little bit bigger. And turn symmetry back on. There we go. That's kind of cool.
kind of gives a little bit of a feeling <laughs> of of that kind of I don't know wild animal kind of thing. And sometimes, I mean, I don't have to apply this everywhere. I mean, I could just apply it there where I did it and, I'd, you know, be done with it too. So, you know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it along the rest of the face. Yeah, let's get on top of its head. Let's try that poor small hair on the nose, see what it looks like. Turn off symmetry. Yeah, I'm going to crank that up a little bit more. So I'm going to add these, and I'm actually going to add the other ones too on the nose and see how that looks as far as like a combo. I'm going to back this off. Maybe not six, let's do eight. It's, it's kind of a back and forth unless, yeah, let's try seven. But I'm going to make the, I'm going to make them small. So I'm going to, I'm not going to do them really huge. So I'll take just a little bit of time to Slap them on here. So I've added this, the really tiny pokey pores, but I've also combined it with this other bigger mat, but I've just put it on small. I think that helps. I messed ahead. Symmetry turned off at that particular point. There we go. All right, so there's pores, and you just kind of have to like, you know, go in here and put it in spots that make sense. It's one of those like layers that just kind of it works or it doesn't. All right, let's do another uh, layer. Let's turn that one. Actually, let's go up to wrinkles. I'm going to type this into two, see what it looks like. See, that's a bit much. 1.5. Still a bit strong. Kind of like the one. Um, OK. Now let's go and create one more layer. Boom. And we're going to call this one damage. Actually, let's call it just scars. All right, so scars are going to be a little bit more unique. And I'm going to use the, uh, shoot, I'm not going to use clay buildups because it's going to mess everything up. Let's use FormSoft and freehand. And use alpha 06. So there's a couple different scars I like to add. You know, this is a war beast. He's got to have some sort of scarring, right? I mean, he's been through battle. He's taken some blows. He's, you know, run through, you know, big battle areas and there's tons of other, cre you know, creatures and soldiers or whoever's in this little army that you know, is in this world. Uh, so we're going to need to add certain things like asymmetric scarring and stuff. So let's go here and do that. So I'm going to just make a couple of these kinds of marks, just kind of like little scars. And I'll even use the Z add version of Damien standard. 
So basically what we've just done there is added like a little cut, a little nick across the top of the of the head there. I put a couple of those. I'll just do this to some like key areas, you know, exposed areas. Uh, just to try and do as subtle as I can without making it look too, um, I don't know, obvious is the word, but you know, it's like natural, basically. So that kind of stuff really starts to push it across the edge. And you can do this pretty much anywhere. You can also do big ones too, you know. Um, I've probably got to be careful about putting it on areas that don't have a whole lot of fine wrinkling possibilities, but actually I probably shouldn't put it on the, all the right side of the face either. I'll put some on the other side too. You can also do um, the a Z add. Oops, let's actually make it Z-add. So if I went and did, oh, let's put this in a different layer. Um, what I'm going to do is something cool, I promise. Uh, <laughs> um, try and get this scar to look scarish. Another layer I like to do are, uh, let's see, what do they call that? Not beauty spots. <laughs> uh, what is it? Let's see, just marks. Let's just call it that for a second. Um, anomalies, that's the word I was looking for. I knew it was something weird. If I could spell, that'd be good. And these are just spots that are like, you know, moles and um, little things like that kind of help to, I don't know, push the level of realism to the next level. When you got these little bump, these little bumps here and there, um, I think it looks kind of, kind of neat. Now I usually like to just add a few of these to, you know, maybe have a, a patch of them in certain spots. Maybe a big one here and there. Trying to add too many. I don't want to look like a warthog. There's a certain beauty on, on this guy. I want to kind of keep a certain kind of uh, feeling. But yeah, there you go. Uh, that's generally how you get those kinds of things going. So we got anomalies and we got some damage going there. We just need to keep adding more of the wrinkles uh, to finish that off. Just the, the final sculpting is not quite there yet, but. Um, at least this gives you like an idea of how I approach this stuff. So, yeah, I think that that's that's good for now. I just need to finish it up. It just takes a bit of time. Um, tell you what, let's go talk about the rest of the body. I mean, this is very particular stuff here on the face. So let's um, let me save this now. That I got so many layers. I need to save it. 
but we'll save it and then we'll talk about the uh, other parts of the body. All right, so the rest of the body, very similar stuff. Uh, I'm gonna turn off a few of these layers. Uh, I don't need the anomalies on or the scars, but I will leave, oops, wrong button. Silly me, hit the eyeball. Don't even need the pores really either. All right. Okay, back to wrinkles. And back to form soft. All right, so let's hide everything else. Back to symmetry, all right. Uh, essentially, but if the, the body is, is just an enlargement of what we're doing with the head. Um, not making the wrinkles any bigger. It's just, it's the same uh, approach as the face with the, with, with the brushes and, and what I'm actually sculpting, the actual sculpting technique. So let's, uh, just, I'm done compacting memory here. We'll talk about like the muscles and stuff and what we can do to make these look, you know, even more awesomer. Okay. Got my form soft brush. It's really, really soft, so let's <laughs> make it the two again. There we go. And I got a little bit of pixelation here in the shoulders, but it's all right. Um, we can adjust some of this kind of that effect in Photoshop later. Just given the supportive wrinkling that we talked about before. So it looks pretty good from far away. That's the, and that's the I mean if we're doing extreme close ups I'd have to go H T Geo. I mean, at 6 million, if I divide it again, it'd be at 24 million, which is just beyond what my system can handle or what ZBrush will even allow me to subdivide to. So um, as far as the preferences, I have max polys per mesh is 22 million, so uh, that's all it's going to do. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's all based on my system specs, so it's probably different for everybody. Um, Anyway, that's the reason why I can't really divide again. The only thing I can really do is go in here and add more polys, add more loops and stuff. But um, you know, I'm gonna try to avoid that right now. So it's a lot of this kind of stuff, the same kind of continued motion with the form soft brush, and then the same thing again with the um, standard brush. And we're gonna get this. Uh, let's see, not that this one, and we're going to raise the intensity and start doing this kind of stuff. Lower it every now and then. Before you know it, you've got, you know, these arms that got just a, a bit more uh, texture to them because we got you've done these 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 finer lines throughout. Um, let's try different right here in the armpits. I tend to use these thicker lines. It tends to look all right this way. Kind of gives an idea that the, that the skin kind of bunches up there, which is nice, nice effect, I think. And some some spots I won't even need to detail because it's underneath the um, 
the saddle and all that stuff. So keep in mind that, that kind of thing. You don't want to just sit here and detail something that you will never even see. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Uh, so I'll do it back here. This leg definitely needs it. switch back, oops, not alien skin, that one, switch it back to this and kind of helps to feather out that harsh line. That's way too big, let's take that intensity down. So there you go. I mean, that's pretty much it. Same process. You're just de dealing with different kinds of surfaces with all these muscles and stuff. So I basically just try to tie as much of this stuff, of this stuff as I can together using these different methods here. Um, but it's really not too complicated. What really just makes you want to make sure you're doing it is just check your um, well, you know, ch check yourself as far as what you're trying to do with the skin. What do you what do you want it to look like? Uh, do you want how dry do you want the skin to look, or um, you know, or how wrinkled, that kind of thing. I never did talk about that particular. Um, alpha there. That's okay. I had an alpha that was better. I like this one better than the one I ended up actually using. Uh, let's see, where was it? It's 25. Let me kind of move this thing out of the way again. Alpha 25. It's pretty smooth and nice, right? If I go and look at this like modified version of it, where'd it go? This one right here. You can see there's more action going on. That was the one I intended to use, but Pretty sure I didn't. That's okay, I know you guys won't hold it against me. I think it helps just to have a little bit of anomalies in these alpha maps to, not enough so you can really notice it whenever you're laying down lines and stuff. I uh, like the pattern. Uh, the anomalies in the pattern, but the uh, the point is the um, oh, what is the point? It's getting late. My brain's not working anymore. <laughs> you ever have a thought and just like completely goes? It's just like poof, and you're like, you know what? I'm just not going to finish that thought. So hopefully you understood what I meant the first time, because my brain is. Mush, mush brain. This is very therapeutic stuff, though. This this stage, like I've said, it's just it's really kind of freeing. So maybe that's part of the reason my brain is mush, is because of that. I got a weird thing going on with the pressure sensitivity of this right now. <coughs> Not sure what happened to my Wacom, but it's having a hard time. I mean, it's still working on the pressure sensitivity. You can see I, I can still very lightly push, but it's like it's doing, it's doing like double the strength that I have the brush set to. So I'm having to do really light uh, kind of work. Like I just really tapped there and it put a real deep groove. Usually what that means is a reset on ZBrush or the brush itself. I can reset that too uh, because before you know it, I've got, I've got way too many harsh lines. And, and that's just 
that's just not cool, man. All right. Um, I mean, not, there's not much left to do besides just more of that wrinkling everywhere um, for the body. I mean, doing some damage would be kind of cool here and there. Maybe in the arms, do some good damage spots, anomalies. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're getting pretty close to being done with this guy. I'll just probably do most of that work off camera uh, because it's more of the same stuff. Really, you're not going to be learning anything, honestly. So um, I've tried to hit all the different kinds of surfaces, like all the muscular surfaces like this, uh, the, ver the, wide, uh, the wide areas like here. As long as you're minding your pressure on your brush and you're, you're, you're hitting the areas that really need attention as far as these kinds of su supportive wrinkles, then you should, uh, you should have a successful project. Um, but yeah, so next time I will get into how we actually take this information that we've sculpted for weeks and it's only been about, I don't know, maybe a week of actual sculpting time, maybe more, who knows, um, is, you know, hours wise. Um, but we'll take all this information and we'll put it into displacement maps and bump maps. Uh, and that's going to kick off texturing, um, because the, the, especially the bump maps will really help me to see where there's certain things, um, you know, like the, with the muscle definition, certain major wrinkles that I uh, can't tell what I'm looking at in the flattened UV space uh, will really help because I got these little identifying marks. And it helps just to get some good kickoff for doing color maps that way too, honestly. So, um, but yeah, we'll get into all that good stuff here in the next video as we continue on with the Battle Beast workshop. Um, but we're getting, like I said, we're getting pretty close to being done here with the sculpting. If I can just find some time to finish it off. And uh, if not, we'll just take it as it is because there's plenty of information there to work with. Uh, so, yeah. In the meantime, enjoy your sculpting. Enjoy your beast, uh, your character, your creature, whatever it is you're working on. Hopefully this inspires you to do uh, some, some of your own um, homework. You know, go in there and practice this stuff. Mess around with the alphas. Uh, see what things do, try different uh, strokes, uh, different application types, uh, whether it's the drag rectangle or it's the spray, or if it's using a high a high Z intensity or a low Z intensity, uh, playing around with layers. A lot of this stuff is, is a, there's a comfort level. So once you know, once you figure out you like a certain uh, approach and you, can, you have yourself a little pipeline and you have a project come in, you can burn through it pretty quick if you got yourself figured out which brushes you like and your, your different preferences so I would suggest going in there and either working on your own your own guy and getting all the details put in uh, with the wrinkles and all that or you can uh, just practice just on a little sphere I mean whatever and just and just understand what it is you're doing with the different alphas and, and the pressures and all that all that good stuff all right, until next time, we'll see you later.